What's up? I'm Chuckle Shoot. Welcome to this super quick optimization guide for Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered. This video is only going to focus on in-game options, so check the description down below for some more in-depth guides to get more out of your system. That being said, this game does still have a ton of bugs that it needs to get to, a lot of which have to do with just launching the game, but anyways, assuming you're able to play, let's get the best experience that we can while we can. So, I'll hit escape, head across to settings, and here we can start on the display tab at the very top. You should definitely be playing full screen for the best, most consistent performance, but windowed borderless works just fine. Display resolution should match your display, and aspect ratio is your preference. The one nice thing to see now is cinematics letterboxing. You can turn this off, which will make ultra wide gaming a lot more enjoyable. VSync definitely should be off, unless you're getting screen tearing. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, it's a good idea to turn on NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency or set it to On Plus Boost if your CPU limited. If you have an AMD GPU, AMD Radeon Anti-Lag 2 is about the same thing. Scrolling down further, HDR is your preference. If you have an HDR display, it looks great in-game. Dynamic Resolution Scaling is a target FPS number that you should be reaching and it'll adjust your resolution to more closely match this. So it was previously at 65. If we set it to 120, for example, it'll try to lower the in-game options to get us closer to this number. But for me, at least on a 3080 Ti at 2K, I'm struggling to reach anything above 70 FPS with our default options, which is probably pretty much all maxed out. While you can play with a dynamic resolution, I'd recommend setting this all the way down to off and instead manually setting your upscaling and frame generation options here. So we have DLSS 3, AMD FSR 3, XESS or off. I'd recommend DLSS on NVIDIA GPUs, otherwise AMD FSR 3 on everything else. And of course, the NVIDIA GPUs that don't support DLSS should support AMD FSR 3. So choose either of these first two options and your upscale quality should definitely be set to quality or balanced at worst. Any other more performant options here are going to make your game look a little bit crusty. So quality is where I'll start. Frame generation I would leave off until you're done optimizing as enabling this to either AMD FSR 3 frame generation, which you can use on almost any GPU, or DLSS frame generation, which you can only use on RTX 40 series and above, will get you some technically better FPS. So I've gone from 70 to 80 something. Input latency is going to be noticeable compared to whatever FPS you're getting before. As long as you're getting 60 plus FPS, input lag shouldn't be too bad, but ultimately frame generation is something I'd prefer to leave off, at least most of the time. That also being said, if I look around super quickly, there's some weird stuff that goes on with blurring around our character's hair. Anyways, settings, display, we're practically done here. Let's move on to the graphics tab where we'll get most of our performance. I'll start by lowering the preset all the way down to the lowest possible option and we'll tap back into our game to see what our maximum FPS is. This game will likely leave you CPU limited if you drop everything down to the lowest possible setting, especially with more powerful graphics graphics cards. So whatever FPS you're getting with the lowest possible setting here is probably as high as things are going to go. You'll need to use frame generation to push it any higher. So with that being said, let's raise some options to make the game look better without losing too much, if any, FPS. Texture quality is usually one that you can crank completely for free. If you have the absolute lowest spec graphics card, set it down to low. If you have anywhere around 5-ish gigabytes of VRAM, set it to medium, 6, high, and anything above that, you can leave this comfortably at very high without losing any FPS. Texture filtering, I'd recommend at least 2x anisotropic. If not the default of 16x, you shouldn't see any performance impact. The game will just look a little bit better. If we tap back in, yeah, we haven't lost many FPS, if any at all. And of course, the game with better textures is going to look overall better pretty much no matter what. I've heard lots of things about 16x anisotropic filtering causing some weird graphic issues, at least on consoles. And for that reason, while I'd usually say to crank your texture quality and texture filtering, your texture filtering may cause some weird graphic issues. 
The rest of these options do get super in detail. Near the very top, ambient occlusion is going to make grass and things like that look quite a bit better. If you're playing for more of a cinematic look and you don't mind lower FPS, this is definitely an option you should have on. And shadow quality on low does look noticeably better than very low. But above this, you're not going to really see too much of a difference. I'd recommend leaving this on low at highest. Screen space reflections should be enabled as a water will just look a lot better. And scrolling down further, the rest of these options here I'd probably leave where they are now. If you're noticing some weird pop-in of bushes and things like that at the edge of your render distance, try raising the level of detail here. It'll use more VRAM on your graphics card, so if you have more available, this is definitely an option you should consider raising, as it'll get rid of some of that pop-in that may be noticeable. Scrolling down further, field of view is entirely your preference. While this does technically affect performance, have this to whatever you like and leave it there. At the very bottom, most of these options here are cosmetic and not too much of an impact on performance. Most of the time, I'd recommend depth of field off just so you don't feel like you need glasses. Bloom, lens flares, and a vignette are all nice to have on. Full screen effects are also fine to have and screen space shadows are disabled for some reason, but they also have very little impact in game. I'd probably recommend turning this on and leaving it there. The only thing you may want to lower, especially if you're sensitive to motion sickness, is motion blur. Crank this all the way down and your game should look noticeably better. That weird blur around the hair has completely gone away and I think the only thing holding back you seeing from what I'm seeing is OBS lagging. The game's eating my entire GPU. Now, as we're getting 72-ish FPS, which is still reasonable, it'll probably be more if I close my 100 Chrome tabs and stop recording, but assuming you'd like some extra performance, you can pause, settings, display, and at the very bottom, enable frame generation. Now, frame generation is only available if you have the matching upscaling method above. You can technically use DLSS and FSR3 frame generation, but here it requires the same technology to be selected. So if you're going to be using FSR3 frame generation, select FSR3 as your upscaling method, unless you have an NVIDIA RTX 40 series GPU or above, in which case you'll have it set to DLSS and DLSS frame generation. Once we do this and apply, you'll see that your frame rate should be a lot smoother it's still showing in Steam as 58, but I think it should be higher. But you can notice that there's some weird things happening with the UI and my mouse input is noticeably laggy. Personally, I won't be using a frame generation at all, even with higher FPS, but you may see better results. As for FSR 3 versus DLSS, they should be about the same. There shouldn't be too much of a difference here. Not really. Now, if you want some extra quality on top of this, as in you think you're still currently CPU limited, your GPU's got more power to go with, head back to this middle section of your graphics here, and I'd recommend raising a few options. Clouds, for one, things do look quite a bit better with higher clouds, so probably up to high. Terrain quality has a small impact. As you can see, things are changing just a little bit in the difference, just a little bit in the distance. High is probably where I would leave this. And the last two options here, translucency quality and parallax occlusion mapping, these both have super low impacts on how the game looks. I'll just leave them all for default. It's good enough. Level of detail, you don't necessarily need to raise beyond medium. You can see a couple of things changing in the distance, like these little lower quality models down here. If we set this to high, those suddenly become much nicer looking plants. We can see what they are. Medium, it's fine, I suppose. We should be getting a little bit better performance. But if you have some extra performance on the table, high is probably what you'd want to leave this on, as it'll get rid of most of the lower quality models being loaded, at least within viewable distance. That's it. There's not too much more we can do here, unfortunately. The game still does need quite a bit of optimization to be done to improve itself quite a bit. It is still, well, mostly playable, at least on higher end hardware. That was a mistake. On lower end hardware, I can't be entirely too sure. I'm pretty sure you'll be GPU limited pretty much in all cases, even with the recommended, I think it's 3060. So yeah, ultimately it's kind of a mixed bag. It is super annoying that PSN is outright required to play the game. There's a couple of issues tied to that. And if you're not able to boot the game because of a PSN login issue, you can check the description down below for a workaround on that. Anyways, that's really it for this relatively quick guide. Again, you'll see better results if you optimize Windows further, for which you'll also find guides down below. Thank you for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.